Yes, uh, hello everyone. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, perfect, sir. Yes, hello everyone and welcome to this uh, online webinar on Hisham Mukhtar Ali Senior Reservoir Engineer. In this session specifically, I'm uh, starting to talk about the integrated reservoir management. Uh, this uh, webinar actually is uh, designed to introduce a uh, definition of the uh, reservoir management, integrated reservoir management process and uh, all, uh, all components of uh, the drive to complete uh, reservoir uh, management for uh, total system optimization. So let's start this session directly uh, with the agenda. So agenda is uh, start with the oil recovery process and the full uh, feed modeling, uh, definition of uh, reservoir management, the uh, applications and objectives of distribution pressure uh, measurements, and then uh, the uh, one of the uh, most important uh, topics in uh, reservoir management generally, which is uh, water flooding or second recovery or second recovery uh, techniques, and then uh, diagnostics by material balance analysis. And uh, next, uh, we will uh, cover an overview of uh, production and artificial lift, and finally, well testing applications. So uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, full field modeling process actually, it's a com complicated process. Actually, we have three uh, different segments of this system. The uh, first segment, which is the uh, subsurface part or the uh, fluid flow in, in the porous media or the fluid flow in the reservoir itself. This is the uh, first part. Next, we have the uh, fluid flow in the uh, through well bores or well completion, which is uh, production tubing or uh, completion uh, arrangement uh, like this. And finally, we have uh, fluid flow through uh, surface uh, pipes or pipelines uh, till the uh, last point in this system. So as you can see in this uh, system, as we have um, several types of wells and we may have uh, oil, uh, gas, and, uh, and gas wells. Some of wells may be uh, may producing naturally and others like, may uh, need some uh, support from uh, uh, like artificial lift systems like ESP or gas lift or uh, uh, soccer wood pumping and so on. And next, we will have uh, the, uh, the production uh, manifold, which is the next uh, point for the uh, produced fluids. Uh, then the flow will be directed to the uh, oil and gas uh, separation system, which means that we will, uh, uh, based on number of uh, produced, uh, produced phases. So um, uh, typically, if we have three uh, phase uh, separation system, so we will have an, an uh, outlet for the uh, oil to storage tank, uh, water for maybe a water disposal, water disposal or uh, water, uh, water treatment, and then uh, the gas uh, may be directed to uh, gas uh, pipeline or uh, gas injection if we have such a gas injection in uh, your uh, field of interest. So actually the objective of the um, production system optimization, this is the, uh, actually is achieved by uh, complete surveillance of uh, reservoir characterization, uh, production analysis and full uh, field modeling. So uh, as you can see, this is the typical oil field uh, lifetime. Actually, we have um, uh, uh, four uh, different phases in, in the uh, oil field uh, development uh, operations, starting with the exploration phase. And this uh, uh, plot, as you can see, uh, we have uh, time on X against cash flow on Y axis. So in exploration, this actually the uh, reservoir extension, reservoir structure is, is not well defined. 
And in this uh, period, uh, specifically, we have a negative cash flow due to uh, we have uh, the uh, starting of a uh, field uh, acquisition, seismic acquisition, seismic processing, the starting of exploration, drilling, and so on. So uh, the cash flow is typically uh, negative due to uh, the uh, uh, and uh, we have a high investment at the initial stages of the projects. Uh, if we have uh, such a successful um, exploration, so we will start the production. So a uh, production starting uh, will start at this point. This falls an increase of, uh, of the uh, production uh, rate and the delineation of the appraisal phase. In this phase, actually, we have more data, more understanding regarding the reservoir uh, description, reservoir characteristics, uh, reservoir extension, load contacts, and so on. So in this phase, actually, we have a uh, high increase in, in production uh, profile or production uh, buildup. The next phase is the uh, development phase or uh, peak oil production or uh, uh, peak oil uh, or production plateau. In this phase, actually, we have the highest achieved uh, oil production by the primary recovery. So the objective of reservoir development in this phase specifically is to extend this uh, build as, uh, as much as we can to be as long as uh, possible. And uh, last phase, which is the maturity phase, in this phase actually we have uh, starting of uh, depletion of uh, average uh, reservoir pressure and decline in the production uh, rates like uh, this. So the objective of uh, reservoir development in such phase is to extend the uh, field lifetime as long as uh, possible, or in other words, to delay the uh, the abundant time of this uh, field. So. So, um, in, uh, actually, the uh, reservoir management process plays a significant role while in the uh, delineation and development phase because we have to achieve the highest, uh, the highest production uh, rate for that field, and also we need to uh, extend the uh, development phase or big oil production phase as much as we can. So also uh, in uh, one of the objectives of uh, complete reservoir uh, management is to introduce the different depletion scenarios or different uh, development strategies of, of the fields that maximize the uh, uh, cumulative oil uh, production. In this case, we have three different scenarios and we, for every scenario, we have uh, corresponding field operations or corresponding depletion strategy uh, and that reflects the specific uh, field operations and the specific drilling uh, schedule and so on. So um, in terms of the uh, key measurements and throughout the entire phases, so in evaluation phase, uh, we uh, need to uh, evaluate the uh, uh, prospect risk and integrity in terms of uh, fluid uh, identification of the reservoir lossology and the reservoir uh, extension and so on, and also uh, the assessment of volumetric uncertainty of uh, of the field. So, uh, uh, and, uh, typically, we need to uh, highlight the uh, post and permeability distribution of fluid contacts and uh, the uh, reservoir structure and net base thickness. For delineation phase or appraisal phase, uh, we uh, will, um, our objective in that phase specifically is to reduce uh, reservoir uncertainties regarding uh, reservoir quality, establish development area in, in terms of the uh, reservoir segments or reservoir uh, compartments and so on. And uh, assign or define uh, the production uh, parameters or production constraints that uh, maximizes its uh, uh, field uh, performance and uh, optimize production operations. Next, in the uh, maturity phase, in, or in that phase, as mentioned, we have um, a, a reduction in uh, production rates. So uh, the objective is to maximize uh, production and to minimize decline rate. 
and also uh, to um, uh, problem diagnostics and remediation like uh, the interventions or uh, well intervention stimulation operations, uh, uh, the um, uh, surfacing of uh, wells, uh, treatment of uh, of uh, well problems like increase sudden increase in water cuts uh, and uh, the problems of uh, flow behind the casing and so on. And last is the, uh, the optimization of resources uh, recovery is to uh, buy other techniques like secondary uh, recovery techniques or in, uh, other stimulation techniques like uh, gravel bagging, hydraulic fracturing and so on. So uh, again, uh, this is uh, typically the, uh, in terms of the uh, production uh, technique or uh, recovery technique, uh, typically we have three uh, different uh, recovery techniques as you know, uh, primary, secondary uh, recovery and uh, tertiary or enhanced oil recovery uh, technique. This is the uh, application of, uh, of full field, uh, the uh, full field development planning or uh, reservoir management covers the entire field lifetime. But in, in some, uh, some periods like uh, this uh, surf production optimization and surface facility, uh, the bottleneck is important to optimize production and uh, also uh, reservoir simulation and reservoir study is important throughout the field lifetime for uh, proper reservoir characterization and uh, also uh, proper uh, reservoir management process. So, in, uh, regarding oil recovery techniques, uh, we uh, typically have two different uh, techniques, uh, primary uh, recovery and, and uh, improved oil recovery. So, for uh, primary recovery, uh, the uh, wells may be uh, producing uh, naturally or uh, by in external support at well locations uh, or like uh, artificial lift systems. The uh, recovered oil is actually uh, is less than uh, Thirty percent of original oil in place. For enhanced oil recovery uh, techniques, we have uh, first uh, type or second recovery or uh, the immiscible displacement process, uh, typically water injection or gas injection. The uh, objective of this uh, process is uh, pressure uh, reservoir pressure maintenance or support of the average uh, reservoir uh, pressure. Uh, was time due to depletion was uh, uh, continuous production from uh, the field. The expected recovery factor in, uh, using that technique is up to 50%. The last uh, technique, which is in uh, tertiary or enhanced oil recovery uh, techniques, we have several uh, categories and uh, like thermal uh, immiscible or uh, chemical uh, flooding techniques like surfactant or polymer and so on. So this is the uh, different uh, oil recovery uh, techniques and expected uh, uh, recovery uh, uh, in, the, in, in terms of the original oil in place. So what is the uh, reservoir management process? Actually, it's an ongoing and dynamic process. It's start, uh, starting with the collection of um, analyzing and also validation. Uh, of uh, reservoir uh, data, full data, uh, data of subsurface data from wells production data, uh, surface facility data, and so on. And, they, and then you have to integrate all of uh, the collected data together to uh, uh, to get a uh, reliable reservoir characterization and also to provide an optimal uh, reservoir development and depletion plan. So uh, the objectives for uh, a reservoir management process actually is to uh, and identify and define the uh, reservoir uh, uh, properties and the reservoir property distribution, reservoir characteristics, uh, typically uh, rock and the fluid uh, properties. The is to actually to uh, match the historical. Uh, performance and predict the future reservoir performance under different uh, development strategies and also uh, minimize the uh, drilling of unnecessary uh, wells in other words is to optimize uh, drilling operations to uh, achieve the uh, best uh, well locations and to avoid uh, uh, lost uh, residual oil in place 
Uh, next is to uh, define and design the uh, well and surface facility uh, operating conditions to avoid any uh, restrictions in the uh, full production system and also initiate uh, the operating uh, controls with time and adjust these controls with time. And finally, you have to consider all economic and uh, environmental and legal factors uh, throughout the uh, process of reservoir management. So as mentioned, the, it's an integrated process. You have to uh, uh, collect all uh, corresponding data from uh, geological ex uh, or exploration data, engineering and financial uh, data. Uh, you have, uh, we have several tools available uh, to um, integrate data together and analyze data like seismic interpretation, um, logging uh, while uh, uh, open hole keys to hold logging, cooling operations, the geological uh, modeling, well testing, interpretation, reservoir simulation, and so on. Next is that uh, all people uh, or they have to have uh, an integrated team, including different siblings from exploration, engineering, uh, management, and uh, legal. Also, field personnel are important a part of uh, that team. And uh, finally, you have to um, we have to use the and apply of uh, the uh, available technology solutions to uh, to uh, to solve your uh, uh, reservoir challenges. Like for tight uh, uh, reservoirs, we may apply such hydraulic uh, uh, fracturing applications. Uh, and other uh, for simulating, we may uh, apply such horizontal or uh, horizontal drilling. And also uh, other uh, uh, case the whole logging applications to identify the residual oil saturation, identify the resources of uh, flow behind the casing and so on. So uh, technology is important to be uh, applied and employed properly throughout the reservoir uh, management process. So this is the uh, and team, uh, the entire team. Uh, for reservoir uh, management, as you can see, it's an, a fully integrated team, including all siblings related uh, from technical team and also a managerial, a financial, and environmental team. So uh, for the uh, reservoir management process in, in more details, uh, at first we have to um, collect, interpret, and integrate uh, all of uh, the available uh, data of uh, well and production uh, data, RT or DST data, uh, wireline logging data, uh, maybe open or case the whole logging, uh, core data and BVT data and uh, seismic survey and so on. All of these data must be integrated uh, together and uh, you may uh, apply such correlation of uh, this uh, data in, uh, in uh, uh, vertical or horizontal direction. And next step is uh, using the collected uh, and integrated data, you uh, can get an uh, overview of uh, reservoir characterization in terms of fluid characteristics and uh, the uh, rock characterization and also uh, the uh, geological description of uh, the field, uh, specifically the uh, reservoir extension, reservoir quality, the positional uh, model and uh, um, the reservoir stratification and so on. Uh, so following a proper reservoir characterization uh, process, you can identify key reservoir uh, parameters, main uh, driving mechanism, and can uh, get an, uh, a more reliable uh, estimation of uh, storage uh, for all uh, in place volumes, and can monitor reservoir uh, performance. So, a uh, last step uh, it uh, will uh, be used to get an integrated reservoir simulation model to uh, provide reservoir management decisions and the corresponding uh, depletion scenario. So uh, the uh, reservoir management plan, as uh, mentioned, uh, we have uh, exploration and the basal uh, stage, starting from uh, basin analysis up to the uh, seismic uh, processing, starting of uh, exploration drilling, and and uh, it will be followed by uh, such a basal well and so on. 
and for the for the development phase uh, uh, to assign the development strategy and consider all uh, um, factors, environmental and uh, financial factors, consider also the uh, uh, production and uh, facility operating constraints and uh, uh, get uh, managerial approvals for the assigned uh, development strategy. So uh, for we have actually uh, several uh, reservoir monitoring techniques, uh, uh, wild line uh, testing for open hole closed hole locks, uh, well testing like uh, well testing interpretation. You can get uh, important information uh, regarding uh, reservoir uh, pressure, average for uh, pressure permeability, and uh, the evaluation of completion uh, quality, uh, specifically uh, skin uh, damage and drainage area of uh, wells over the entire reservoir. Abduction logging, uh, typically important to uh, for production diagnostics and uh, and uh, field monitoring. Uh, water conformance is very important and very critical, and specifically if we have uh, such active uh, water uh, aquifer or even uh, active water injection operations. Uh, reservoir fluid sampling is also uh, critical to uh, to get an a proper characterization of uh, fluid uh, reservoir fluid and BVT uh, modeling uh, process process and uh, specifically for uh, volatile oil uh, or gas condensate reservoirs. Uh, reservoir simulation, one of the important uh, management uh, reservoir management techniques, is that to integrate all of the available uh, data into a single 3D reservoir model uh, for proper characterization and uh, effective uh, management, uh, um, specifically uh, for assigning the uh, the uh, best or the ultimate uh, development strategy and for the reservoir. Uh, also, uh, material balance applications, it's an uh, important tool for uh, reservoir management for to predict and optimize the uh, the calculations of uh, soil and uh, and confirm the reservoir communication and the flood conduct monitoring and also against the whole logging like um, uh, the uh, saturation uh, logging uh, like sigma logging carbon oxygen logging and so on are also uh, one of the important techniques for reservoir management. So now uh, one of the uh, applications uh, or techniques to be used, uh, which is the uh, distributed pressure measurements. So uh, first I need to highlight the importance of uh, the reservoir fluid data. It's very important for uh, drilling uh, to uh, to assign the uh, the uh, well constructions and specifically if we have uh, such uh, H2, the carbon dioxide or uh, hydrogen sulfide in the uh, reservoir fluid, uh, oil based mud contamination, and also uh, sample validation. Uh, we have to have such uh, reservoir fluid data information. For uh, reservoir engineering, the uh, fluid data are important. Uh, for uh, reserve estimation of reservoir simulation for material balance, well testing interpretation, and also for any uh, multi phase flow operations, uh, reservoir fluid data is very important. For completion data, uh, fluids uh, will, uh, will uh, be used to assign the artificial lift uh, calculations. Competition design specifically the in, in case we have H2S or CO2 in uh, reservoir fluid, and also uh, for subsea applications uh, and uh, the uh, material uh, selection and the material specifications for uh, completion strength. And uh, finally, for uh, production, uh, we have uh, the fluid reservoir fluid data is uh, important for. Uh, multi multi uh, phase flow uh, metering uh, calculations uh, production facility design specifically in case of uh, volatile oil reservoir or high solution gas oil issue we have to consider the uh, 
the associated gas in the uh, with the produced oil to uh, for uh, production facility design and also uh, production forecast is very uh, BVT data or fluid data is very important in that case and uh, production logging interpretation. To highlight one of the uh, important bottom hole sampling uh, techniques or, or available uh, tools like uh, the uh, wireline uh, sampling tool or uh, MTT tool or equivalent RDT tool. It's um, one of the open hole logging tools uh, used for the confirmation of reservoir uh, fluid and res average reservoir pressure and also the uh, reservoir uh, permeability. So, uh, and the widely used uh, tools in, for that, uh, that uh, purpose are uh, the MDT or modular formation dynamic tester and uh, RFT or repeat uh, form formation tester. And as, an, uh, as you can see, uh, this is different configurations for the MDT tool. Uh, it's uh, typically, uh, we have to have this, uh, um, this uh, component uh, basic tool. Uh, we have other options like uh, the um, an, uh, inflatable uh, packer to provide a good seal for the, um, the uh, pressure probe. And this is the uh, basic tool. We have several uh, modules like electric module, hydraulic sampling uh, chamber, and single probe to measure uh, reservoir pressure. The uh, another important component for the tool are the uh, the uh, probe or uh, fluid analyzer, like LFA or uh, live fluid analyzer, or the other uh, versions like OFA or optical fluid analyzer to for uh, fluid characterization while pumping. And uh, next uh, important part, which is multi uh, sample module, to collect reservoir fluid samples. So uh, this is the uh, wireline MDT uh, wireline sampling tool. This is the um, uh, the uh, key tool configuration. This is the uh, probe for uh, uh, test and the fluid sampling. And this is the uh, technique. So as you can see, we have uh, uh, electric uh, bar module, high different modules for different applications. For uh, flow control module, it will control the flow from the tool to uh, control the uh, opening and the closing of uh, the uh, hydraulic uh, valves. Uh, optical fluid analysis module to characterize uh, the uh, bombed fluids or the, uh, the uh, coming fluid from the reservoir. A multi-sample module to uh, collect the reservoir fluid samples. And also uh, the, uh, the last bomb out module for uh, to bump a reservoir of, uh, uh, fluid to and um, to uh, ensure we have clean reservoir of fluid sample. So as a comparison uh, between the uh, single uh, probe and uh, dual backer, so this is the uh, the uh, process of uh, fluid sampling. So uh, dual backer actually, as you can see, uh, provides a, a good uh, sealing or good uh, hydraulic seal for the uh, for the uh, uh, pressure uh, measurements and uh, to avoid any communication with the uh, well bore uh, fluids or drilling fluids. And also, it will uh, ensure the uh, good sample. Uh, uh, good sample characterization because it will uh, avoid high sample communication with the uh, uh, the drilling uh, flow. So in this example, we have uh, uh, this uh, pressure profile using uh, dual probe. As you can see, we have less scattering in the recorded uh, pressure while this drawdown or bump out interval. While for uh, build up, we have. Uh, uh, high uh, uh, quality pressure reading without any scattering like the uh, single probe. And we have to collect the samples at uh, this drawdown intervals. But in the same time, we have uh, for single probe, we have higher scattering in the uh, recorded uh, pressure. And uh, also in, in this, uh, we have uh, high, relatively high contamination of the uh, collected samples. So uh, to understand uh, the MDT tool, what we have inside, uh, 
actually this is the typical configuration of the tool uh, this is the uh, uh, flowed inlet of, uh, of the uh, poop and the tool is uh, forced at the uh, whole uh, borehole walls using this uh, this uh, 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 shoulder and once we have uh, formation fluid is um, uh, entering the tool from this uh, inlet the fluid will pass through the uh, different uh, tool modules the uh, actually for uh, fluid characterization while sampling we have this resistivity and uh, resistivity uh, cell uh, for uh, uh, determination of uh, uh, fluid resistivity while assembling or while uh, bombing out and uh, also uh, we have an uh, this uh, we have uh, density uh, uh, measurements of the um, of the bombed uh, fluid. So uh, in this tool, actually, we have several uh, modules, and the quartz gauge or string gauge uh, pressure uh, to uh, for measurements of the uh, reservoir uh, pressure. And for fluid characterization, we have OFA or uh, uh, optical fluid analyzer for uh, fluid characterization uh, while sampling. So as long as we are uh, bombing out of uh, reservoir uh, fluid, so the fluid is uh, passes through, uh, passes through the resistivity and density uh, cell, and uh, we can uh, identify the uh, contamination of fluid using the opti optical fluid analyzer. And uh, while uh, bombing out the uh, the fluid, there will be the uh, uh, will be uh, bombed into the uh, pool hole because uh, once we uh, bombing the uh, fluid sample is uh, becomes more uh, clean with time uh, due to the uh, at, uh, at the first time we have the uh, effect of invaded mud filtered or drilling fluid at the starting time of the uh, bombing so uh, this is the importance of a bomb out uh, module. Once the sample is 100% uh, or uh, clean uh, for a specific uh, level, we can uh, close this uh, valve and start to collect the sample uh, and direct the uh, flow to the, uh, uh, the multi sample uh, module to collect one of the uh, 450 uh, uh, cubic centi centimeter cube as a uh, bottom wall uh, chamber or bottom wall uh, bottle of uh, reservoir flow. So the typical uh, process, as you can see, is um, at for any pressure point or any uh, fluid sample, we start with the, uh, uh, at this, uh, at this uh, Point in terms of pressure with time. We have hydrostatic pressure of mud before uh, setting of uh, backer. This is the hydrostatic uh, pressure of trailing fluid. And then uh, once we set backer, you have such a decrease in uh, pressure due to the hydraulic uh, sealing of, uh, of uh, drilling fluid uh, over the uh, pressure gauge. And at this uh, point, we start uh, the uh, start of the drawdown to start uh, bombing of such uh, slow um, small amount of dwelling fluid and then at this point we stop bombing and start uh, build up so uh, this uh, build up profile or build up pressure profile and this uh, file you can get an a proper estimation of the average uh, reservoir pressure if we have a valid uh, pressure or valid uh, pretest. The uh, validity of uh, pressure measurements is based on the uh, actually in reservoir mobility and the uh, the uh, the stabilization in pressure uh, with time. And at this point, point five, we have the hydrostatic uh, pressure after um, unsetting uh, of the backup. This is uh, similarly in terms of uh, the uh, uh, flow line resistivity and the pressure. So uh, pressure is starting uh, from, uh, to decrease due to uh, start of uh, drawdown. And in the same time, we have in, in, uh, the uh, flow line resistivity is increasing post time, which means the, uh, the uh, sample contamination is decreasing with time uh, due to uh, the uh, the uh, bombing out of uh, the fluid near wood pool fluid affected by uh, hydraulic uh, drilling fluid uh, 
contamination and mud filtering. So uh, for uh, optical fluid analyzer, and as an example, and it's an actually we have optical absorption spectrum with uh, with ten discrete channel. Every channel is related to a specific uh, fluid. For channel uh, number six and seven and nine, uh, they are related to water, and this is the uh, the indication of high absorb absorbing fluid uh, flag. So, and the uh, at starting of pump out, we have uh, the uh, mud. Uh, typically uh, mud filtered and with uh, continuous pumping, we have a uh, reduction in sample contamination and uh, we have the oil spectrum. Uh, it's also uh, reflected on the this uh, visible uh, uh, spike, uh, spike on the uh, hydrocarbon identification. So uh, this is an uh, off a log uh, presentation. So starting of uh, bomb out, uh, we typically have uh, a clear uh, mud filter it. And uh, once we have an uh, formation, uh, true formation flow, the entry, if we have a hydrocarbon uh, interval, so it will be uh, uh, highlighted on the uh, resistivity cell. And sample contamination is, uh, is uh, uh, typically in decreasing with uh, continuous pumping. So up to this, uh, this level, we have uh, typically 100% uh, oil of, uh, of the sample. So we can collect the sample at this time after 80 minutes of starting uh, bomb out. So this is another example. This is the uh, log presentation at the start of uh, bomb out. We typically have uh, water, or which is uh, mud filtered, and uh, in, this is in the uh, uh, it's log uh, spectrum. Uh, we have complete uh, water signature. Uh, while pump out, as you can see, we have the start of uh, we have uh, hydrocarbon or oil signature. But in between, you have some batches of, uh, of uh, water in, uh, at specific uh, times. But uh, while sampling, this is the uh, sample, uh, the final uh, time we started sample for this example. We have uh, typically a clean sample with a very small amount of, uh, of water. So we can start uh, fluid sampling at this time. So uh, for reservoir uh, fluid uh, uh, gradient and the reservoir fluid contacts, so pressure data recorded by MDT or RFT uh, tools can be used to generate uh, or identify the uh, reservoir uh, fluid uh, uh, contact and average reservoir uh, pressure. So in in, uh, in typical case, we have uh, three phase uh, system, gas, oil, and water. And in between, we have, uh, for every uh, phase, we have a specific fluid gradient. And uh, for water and oil and also for gas, the intersection between the uh, two, uh, uh, two uh, these two lines is the, um, uh, the fluid contact, uh, like oil water uh, contact. So uh, using the uh, recorded the pressure or uh, measure or the measure of the pressure, we can identify float contact and uh, float gradient and then can get the float contact. This is the uh, typical uh, gradient ranges for uh, different reservoir fluids for uh, gas and to uh, water. Water actually starting from 0.41 uh, uh, psi per foot up to 0.55. A BSI per foot as fluid gradient, and the lowest gradient is typically for a dry gas reservoirs. So uh, the uh, pre-test uh, actually all the uh, measurements of uh, reservoir pressure, and the pre-test we uh, typically uh, have an an uh, early time spherical flow due to the limited entry of uh, reservoir fluid of uh, the limited flow area. Of the uh, of the uh, tool uh, probe, and then we will uh, we can uh, 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 we can uh, we can find an radial flow with uh, with time at stabilized flowing conditions. 
So uh, this is the uh, flow regime that can be uh, uh, identified while pumping uh, out or while pre testing in the, uh, uh, in the bottom wall pressure measurements. So, and this is the uh, uh, pressure and uh, derivative. So, for uh, this is the early time spherical flow, as you can see, we have negative half a slope straight line in the pressure uh, derivative which is a signature for spherical flow actually due to the limited entry of uh, the flow at, um, at the uh, probe inlet. And, uh, and then we may have such a, a hemispherical flow uh, was also a negative half slope straight line. But for stabilize the flowing conditions for a uh, uh, pressure point, you will find a uh, complete or clear uh, radial flow was an identified using this horizontal uh, der uh, derivative on an all uh, uh, zero uh, slope line. So as for this uh, integrated um, evaluation, as you can see, this is the open hole uh, measurements. Uh, in this example, we have uh, typically a triple combo uh, uh, logs, uh, gamma ray resistivity and density in uterine. And uh, as you can see, we have, uh, before looking at the uh, pressure measurements, we have this um, uh, good high resistivity uh, zone corresponding to uh, uh, slightly uh, good sand and interpreted with shale or silt. But in, in, as you can see, we have clear uh, reduction in resistivity with uh, depth starting from this point. And right here, we have clearly water zone. So the transition zone is uh, typically follows this uh, reduction in resistivity. But if we uh, look at the uh, bottom wall pressure measurements using MDT tool, let's uh, in, uh, in this well, which is well one, this is the uh, recorded uh, pressure uh, data. And uh, by integrating the um, uh, or constructing this plot as uh, pressure versus uh, two vertical depths and y axis, you can uh, calculate the pressure, the uh, slope of this line. And using slope, you can uh, get the flow gradient, which is 0.42 uh, water gradient. For this well, we have. Uh, um, actually uh, six measured uh, uh, points, uh, pressure uh, points in, in equivalent to these steps. The gradient is 0.38 uh, piece either foot or oil gradient. But while we have four uh, measured pressure uh, uh, points according to this, corresponding to this uh, interval, uh, typically for this water zone, we have gradient is uh, 0.43 or uh, water gradient. So the intersection between these two lines is the uh, expected oil water contact at that uh, level. It's uh, uh, actually, uh, it's um, the, um, the beginning of uh, uh, resistivity increase or the beginning of this transition zone between uh, water zone and oil zone. So this well actually is, is uh, perforated at this first interval away from the uh, water zone and uh, corresponding to the uh, highest reservoir quality using the uh, density neutron logs. Also other applications for uh, distributed uh, pressure measurements is to confirm the uh, reservoir mobility uh, barriers and the reservoir communication. So and we have a single pressure profile, but in this example, we have different pressure uh, profiles which means that's an indication of the such vulnerability uh, barriers and also uh, reservoir communication. So in this example, we may have a um, uh, communication between these uh, uh, two and clients at, uh, the, um, at this uh, lower, lowest uh, point of the structure uh, across the uh, water uh, aquifer. So uh, now another technique, which is water flooding management so actually water flooding is a secondary uh, recovery technique as mentioned before what's important to highlight right here is uh, the applications of uh, secondary and tertiary recovery uh, techniques for light oil reservoirs uh, secondary and tertiary or enhanced oil recovery can uh, target up to 75 percent of original oil in place 
but uh, the primary cover is um, you can achieve up to uh, 25 or 70 percent of original oil place. But for actually for heavy oil uh, reservoirs, the case is totally different because uh, uh, the secondary and uh, enhanced oil recovery techniques collectively can achieve up to or more than 90% uh, of original oil in place due to different uh, challenges in uh, reservoir work and the flow like the heavy oil uh, reservoirs. So in, in, in that case, uh, the applications of hot water or steam injection is highly recommended to improve the recovery and so on. So this is the importance of uh, and enhanced oil recovery uh, techniques. So uh, for water flooding, it's a secondary recovery uh, technique uh, to optimize and increase oil uh, production by the, the uh, immiscible displacement process and of, uh, of the uh, residual oil by the injected water. Advantages of uh, that technique, actually, uh, the relatively low cost uh, 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 in comparison on other techniques like uh, gas injection, the uh, supplement of uh, the average with for pressure or uh, uh, pressure maintenance, the also uh, the availability of water, the um, the years of water, uh, water injection the process, it's more, uh, it's um, one of the um, commonly used applications of uh, second recovery. So uh, field personnel are uh, are highly uh, familiar with this uh, process and its uh, its uh, operation uh, sequences and so on. So uh, for um, water flooding, actually, uh, the the objectives uh, is to support the average uh, as a pressure as a pressure maintenance, split or push the remaining oil towards the oil production wells, eliminate more gas to release of, uh, of the liquid due to or avoid the, the uh, further reduction in average reservoir pressure. So you will eliminate more release of uh, the uh, gas in solution and finally increase the recovery uh, factor. So uh, rule of water in the uh, field operations actually, and during production, the water can uh, will be used to uh, uh, to sweep oil or uh, remaining oil uh, water maybe uh, uh, from uh, natural water uh, influx from water aquifer or uh, by water injection operations, but. Um, once uh, we have high volumes of uh, water uh, production, so surface uh, treatment of, of the produced water uh, may uh, uh, may become uh, or the system, the uh, surface treatment system, may be overloaded with uh, water because we have uh, the produced stream uh, will pass through the separation system to uh, separate uh, hydrocarbons and water. And uh, once we have high water, this water actually uh, have to be uh, subject water treatment or water disposal. So this is representing an additional cost to the, uh, the uh, production system. Therefore, it's important to uh, minimize the water oil ratio and maximize the uh, vertical sweep efficiency to avoid actually the early uh, water fix flow and optimize oil production process. So the optimum uh, water flooding is uh, we have several components you have to consider in terms of water injectors, number of water and locations of water injectors is uh, very important to uh, avoid uh, an early water and a big swan and to, uh, to ensure a good uh, displacement efficiency for uh, water injected or uh, the injected water. And we have to consider the quality of uh, injected water and also compatibility of injected water with the uh, uh, reservoir uh, uh, fluid. And for uh, production wells, uh, the optimization of the uh, production parameters or production rates will uh, affect the uh, the uh, production performance and also will avoid the, the uh, early uh, 
what are big slow or sudden increase in production rates or uh, what are sudden increase in water cuts. And also the uh, correct measurements of uh, production uh, data and production monitoring is very important and very critical for uh, proper system uh, evaluation and uh, monitoring. So um, for the uh, produced uh, water and uh, the injected water, we have to confirm the uh, water compatibility uh, testing and uh, proper uh, water minute, uh, metering system for measurements of the injected volumes. So uh, the uh, water flood management, it's um, a uh, highly integrated process starting from the uh, reservoir flow unit and well level up to the field or area or block level. So uh, the water flood uh, scorecards, it's, um, we have several components to consider uh, together and integrate the uh, data uh, together uh, data from a well pool uh, injector um, and um, uh, injection uh, data. Uh, reservoir parameters typically uh, voidage replacement and average reservoir pressure measurements and monitoring with time. Surface facility to ensure uh, water quality and surface injection system performance. Uh, uh, typically, the uh, water injection uh, rate and water injection pressure and uh, monitoring of water quality and water chemistry was time. And uh, for reservoir data, uh, and, um, the measurements of uh, average reservoir pressure is very important. To highlight uh, very quickly the process of immiscible displacement, uh, we have uh, several techniques applied in, in for just uh, papers, but I will highlight uh, the one of the widely used techniques, which is the uh, uh, fractional flow equation, uh, or FW. It follows uh, this uh, relationship, actually. This is a typical relationship if we consider gravity and capillary uh, pressure term. But uh, for um, if we consider 100% water flowing, which means FW equals one, uh, or in other words, no oil flow. Uh, but for more simplified form for this uh, uh, fractional flow equation for horizontal reservoir and ignoring the gravity and capillary term, this is typically the uh, relationship of FW. It's a function of uh, relative mobility uh, ratio and uh, viscosity ratio. So as a um, um, and applications of fractional flow curve, it's FW against water saturation. So this curve can be used to, uh, to uh, predict the uh, average water saturation at, uh, at the uh, uh, flood front at fixed row and the fractional flow at, uh, at, uh, uh, at uh, the uh, flood front. Using uh, that technique, this is the um, average water saturation at uh, water fixed row using this, uh, this uh, uh, graphical technique. So this uh, technique and this is a water saturation at the flood front. So this technique is applied in this uh, um, uh, example. We have uh, this is FW against water saturation. If we get on uh, this tangent line from SWI and get tangent from this uh, F uh, fractional flow curve, so you can at this uh, at this point at FW equals one, we have average water saturation at the uh, at water uh, slope behind the flood front. But if we have an, uh, a tangent line from this uh, this point uh, to FW equals one, this is the uh, water saturation behind the injector and uh, producer uh, at uh, at this average uh, water saturation at uh, uh, it was uh, 74 uh, percent. So uh, this term is, uh, is this is an, an analytical approach actually to characterize the expected water flood performance. So uh, back again, this is the, from this tangent we have uh, from SWI or irreducible uh, water saturation. We can this tangent line. So at this line we have SW at um, SWF which is 55% uh, and FW, uh, which is 82.5%. Uh, 
for uh, SWBT uh, average utah saturation at the peak so it's uh, 63% to calculate the displacement efficiency it's uh, following this equation at the SW uh, peak so minus SWI uh, divided by 1 minus SWI so the calculated uh, displacement efficiency it's about uh, 54% so uh, this is an feed example of uh, water uh, injection. So water injection is started at this uh, mo uh, this uh, uh, point, and uh, this is the uh, average reservoir pressure. So uh, as you can see, uh, after um, start of water injection, we have such increase in in, uh, in reservoir pressure for some wells, which means we have uh, such a, a effect of uh, water injection on average uh, reservoir pressure. So uh, it will be highlighted with the uh, pressure measurements. And this is the also uh, reflected on, on the uh, production rates. And we have uh, an increase in production rates and followed by a specific uh, production decline and due to increase in um, the uh, produced water or the uh, amount of water cut. So one of the uh, management techniques for water injection it is hull uh, plotted. So and it's used to evaluate well injecti injectivity problems due to near wall pool uh, injection uh, damage. So um, this technique is uh, is basically based on this uh, plot. We have hull coefficient on y axis against cumulative water injection so it's also a graphical technique to uh, technique to evaluate the the uh, the uh, quality or uh, well injectivity uh, problems and also identify the injectivity uh, problems in the injection wells uh, due to uh, water problems or uh, compatibility issues and so on and also quantify well poor skin uh, damage for the injection well so uh, for typical or uh, um, uh, the uh, the uh, normal operating conditions this uh, uh, this relationship will follow the straight line but if we have such deviation uh, and the uplift uh, but we have an indication for damage in the injection wells but if we have a deviation uh, to the uh, right uh, side we have an indication for improvement in the injectivity and uh, reduction in the uh, injection re resistance so i'll uh, blot it um, we have high coefficient it's a uh, summation of uh, delta pressure multiplied by delta time the required parameters are a cumulative monthly injected water volume and uh, water injection uh, pressure. So this is the normal operations in the uh, deviation to uh, uplift uh, side in some indication of uh, and damage uh, well or uh, gradual plugging while for uh, this deviation to the uh, uh, right direction it's an indication of improvement in the injectivity or indication of the uh, uh, stimulation uh, operations in, in uh, the injector worlds. So for this uh, field example, we have all of these injectors. So actually this group of injectors, we have high resistance to injection or a low injectivity index. But for this group of wells, we have uh, low resistance to injection or high resistivity index. So uh, for uh, proper reservoir management in that case is to, you have to, um, you have to monitor all of these uh, wells to apply such um, well interventions technique uh, like uh, well stimulation to improve the water injectivity index and increase or uh, uh, increase the injection capacity and also decrease the uh, uh, resistance to injection. So this is an, another field example. As you can see, we have five different wells. And uh, this is how plot is used to evaluate the injection performance and injectivity problems. So uh, the best two wells, uh, according to this uh, graphical technique, is uh, this well in the, uh, in the red and uh, purple color. 
if you look at the cumulative water injection, you will find the highest uh, water injected is for this red, uh, uh, red color, which means we have uh, the uh, best injectivity index and uh, a low uh, resistance to, uh, to uh, flow to injection. While this well in the uh, black color, which is the uh, worst well in terms of water injectivity, uh, index you will find the cumulative water injected is very very small relative to uh, other wells. Another and uh, another um, parameter to uh, to evaluate the water injection uh, uh, management is uh, voltage replacement uh, or the injection to production ratio. So uh, voltage is about voltage actually it's uh, the uh, um, uh, the total produced volume measured at the reservoir conditions. At the same time, we have to consider all produced fluids, uh, typically uh, water and uh, free gas production. So uh, for uh, the uh, most common applications in water injection, we have to consider the voltage replacement ratio as um, higher than or equal to one to, uh, to uh, um, ensure the the support of average uh, reservoir uh, pressure with time. So uh, voltage replacement ratio, it's, as, uh, it's as a summation of uh, water uh, influx uh, due to water, uh, uh, due to aquifer or water injection divided by the reservoir voltage as, uh, as defined. So this is the uh, reservoir, monthly reservoir uh, voltage. It's simply the submission of uh, total uh, produced uh, oil, water, and uh, free gas production. So voltage replacement ratio is defined by this equation. We have the um, uh, water injected, or we have uh, water influx. You have to add this in the, uh, with the uh, water injection. So uh, for uh, voltage replacement ratio higher than one, that means the average reservoir pressure is maintained as um, higher than or, uh, uh, or maintained stable with the continuous production operations. So uh, for this field example, as you can see, if you look at the uh, uh, production uh, parameters, and we have in this period, we have a steep decline in production rates and uh, corresponding to this uh, consistent voltage replacement ratio, it's a um, more or less constant voltage replacement ratio. And that means we, the average reservoir pressure is uh, more or less uh, stable with uh, this production. But once we started um, and, uh, at, this, uh, at this period, to install uh, ESP pump in, in wells, which means we have high drawdown or high reservoir pressure depletion. So this is uh, equivalent to actually the uh, voltage replacement ratio is, uh, is uh, uh, more or less 0.5. That, mean, uh, that means we have to increase the amount of uh, water injected to uh, ensure the voltage replacement ratio uh, within uh, within one to uh, to avoid uh, such um, or rapid reduction in the average reservoir pressure. And another technique, which is the material balance application for reservoir management. So a material balance is uh, simply a relationship between the uh, reservoir uh, portfolio, average reservoir pressure, and the cumulative production or injection operations. If we uh, look, if we look at uh, this example, when the uh, and, um, if we have three phase uh, reservoir, if we uh, this uh, oil uh, oil zone, and we may have such uh, gas injection or gas cap, and also for water aquifer and or water injection, this is the uh, typical uh, reservoir system. So uh, requirements for material balance uh, uh, applications is uh, the correct production data, cumulative oil, cumulative water, cumulative gas production, and average uh, reservoir pressure and other uh, pressure dependent PVT uh, data. And also uh, rock compressibility is uh, very important in that calculations. So applications is to, uh, 
to estimate the uh, stoy uh, for oil or uh, gas initially in place uh, for gas uh, reservoir, and also to estimate uh, water influx and estimate the uh, gas cap volume or gas cap size. Additionally, material balance can be used to estimate the uh, uh, effective or the dominant uh, uh, reservoir driving mechanism. One of the most uncertain parameters to identify using material balance application is the uh, M or gas cap volume and water influx WA, and also a uh, stoib or uh, in place volume. So uh, simply this is the material balance equation production, total production of oil and water equals expansion of oil and initial uh, in place plus uh, water influx. So uh, this is the uh, um, typical or general material balance equation. I uh, don't, I will not go so in, in this equation in details, but you have to consider this, uh, uh, this, uh, for the, this concept. So uh, due to this complex, actually this complex relationship and in, uh, in 1964, uh, Havrina and Oda introduced uh, what we call the linear form of all linearized material balance equations uh, due to the complexity of the uh, general material balance uh, form. Uh, this, uh, uh, this linear form actually is uh, introduced by uh, rearrangement of the original equation to produce an equation an equation of a straight line. Uh, so assembly is approach is to plot a group of variable, uh, a group variable against another uh, variable uh, group with the, um, with the, uh, uh, based on the uh, reservoir driving mechanism. So uh, assembly, if we consider this form, if equals this uh, right hand side. So right hand side uh, or left hand side, which is F, or underground withdrawal, it's simply representing the total production in units of uh, reservoir balance. So it's a uh, uh, NB, which is uh, cumulative oil uh, production reduced uh, by the BVT parameter to convert to a reservoir condition. And uh, they consider uh, the uh, figure as production, and we can consider water production. But uh, right hand side is simply the expansion term. It's uh, we have three components: oil expansion and and uh, solution, yeah, originally solution or solvent gas expansion. The expansion of uh, water and uh, and uh, formation uh, uh, pore spaces and uh, uh, combination of pore spaces and also uh, the uh, free gas expansion. So this is simply the uh, uh, general linearized material balance equation according to uh, definition of uh, Havlina and other uh, concept. So another um, and one of the important critical techniques for uh, applications of material balance, which is Dick and Campbell plots. So it's um, this, uh, it will follow this relationship uh, uh, and y axis against cumulative oil production and x axis. The concept is is very simple. The uh, the main assumption or the uh, base case for that uh, that technique is uh, for volumetric reservoirs or depletion reservoirs. So you will have uh, in this relationship you will have horizontal a straight line. This um, uh, for volumetric system was. Uh, within the uh, the main uh, reservoir driving mechanism is the solution of uh, gas or expansion of solution gas. But if you have this, um, uh, if you have uh, this form of this relationship, we have additional energy of uh, uh, from 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 uh, gas cap, which means we have continuous reservoir pressure support. If we have this uh, uh, unit slope straight line, but for this scenario. We have an increase in in, in the uh, in the pressure support at initial uh, time, but at uh, at the late time we have a reduction, which means we have another um, external boundary uh, interference, 
or other um, uh, uh, effect of uh, drainage uh, at the drainage uh, outer drainage boundary of the reservoir. But if we have this scenario, we have the slight in increase in the pressure support, but we have a uh, rapid uh, reduction to follow on uh, a more or less horizontal line, which means we have a weak aquifer uh, support or weak aquifer drive. So uh, for um, Dick and Campbell, uh, Campbell is um, very similar to Dick, but um, it's, uh, this uh, blood is typically more sensitive to uh, the water or uh, aquifer strength. So it simply follows the same concept. So for the vision drive, we have this horizontal uh, line, uh, but for a weak uh, water drive, we have a slight increase in the F over 80. F is the total production, 80 is the total expansion. Uh, against the F total withdrawal in X axis, this typical behavior of uh, where we put an aquifer, but for this scenario, we have a strong water drive, and this is a, a moderate water uh, drive. So, so an, uh, an example for this, we have this uh, reservoir, we have a volumetric uh, uh, depletion reservoir, no gas cap. Uh, and no uh, water influx. So if we look at this uh, general equation, ignore M because we have no gas cap, ignore WA, no water influx. So this uh, will be the uh, modified uh, equation for this case. So if we ignore the uh, compressibility of uh, formation water, so this is the total equation we have F uh, equals in um, NE. So you can plot this in uh, relationship on uh, we have this uh, reservoir data. So if we consider this equation, if you uh, if you uh, make a regression line for this relationship, you will have this uh, equation or uh, fitting equation. But if we force this uh, data to have an, uh, an um, zero int uh, intercept according to this relationship, so you will have this form y equal 50, uh, 50 multiplied by x. x is typically the value of n or um, n volume. So, um, so uh, if we have, uh, uh, we have, as you can see, uh, slight differences between the two scenarios. So um, uh, we can consider uh, the n uh, volume is uh, more or less uh, 56 million stock tank barrel. And we have slight uh, water uh, influx or the uh, weak water aquifer uh, due to we have this term in uh, in a straight line the straight line equation. This is the actual uh, field data typically. So another um, according to um, another division drive case. Uh, uh, according to Havlin and Oda Puccino, uh, water influx W equals zero. So uh, you can check the Campbell plot. So as, as mentioned before, if you plot uh, F um, uh, divided by ET against F and X axis. So in, uh, in, uh, as you can see, we have horizontal, uh, we have this horizontal line, which means we have depletion drive uh, reservoir. And n is in that case equals the uh, intercept of uh, y with y axis 150 million stock tank value. To, um, to evaluate the effect of EFW in this equation, so and this uh, equation is F minus WE. If we apply uh, this uh, equation uh, against uh, ED, ED means we considering uh, the EFW. But uh, for this uh, relationship in the in the uh, in the red color, we uh, didn't uh, consider the uh, EFW. So as you can see, we have a slight uh, difference. We have significant difference between the two relationships, which means the effect of EFW or effect of fluid from the um, the compressibility of uh, of, uh, of formation and um, or uh, is significant to consider in material balance equation.
So another example of what an uh, influx, um, we have an, uh, what an influx in this field uh, without uh, any initial gas cap. So according to the general equation, we will ignore this term and ignore EFW. So this is the final equation. If we uh, uh, rearrange this equation to follow a straight line relationship, as you can see, so this is an equation of a straight line y equals ax plus uh, b. So we can plot, as you can see, uh, w uh, divided by et on, on x axis against uh, y against this term and on y axis. So this is the water influx diagnostic plot, as you can see, if the relationship is follow this straight line. So uh, we have got water influx, this is the correct uh, scenario. But if the uh, data, uh, we have deviation in data to this uh, uh, left side, so water influx is too small. But if we have uh, deviation in data, in this direction on right uh, hand side, uh, we in that case, what our influx expected calculated with our influx is uh, too large. So you can uh, calculate okay and identify the uh, correct water influx uh, behavior according to this uh, this plot as you can as you can see. So this is the actual uh, field data and using this red straight line, but uh, actually uh, we have such deviation in, in data to the uh, the uh, left hand side so that means water influx is, is smaller uh, 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 as smaller than uh, expected or smaller than actual so as uh, mentioned we're using this diagnostic plot of water influx so so as the uh, main uh, uncertainty parameter for this uh, material balance calculation is to uh, is to um, uh, identify the correct water influx so using this technique you can if we have uh, correct water influx uh, uh, estimation so a straight line we will have this uh, linear relationship but if water influx is underestimated so uh, data or line uh, goes up like this and um, other words and uh, if we uh, have uh, water influx is overestimated so line uh, goes down like this scenario this is another example of uh, of um, material balance analysis, as you can see, using the uh, pressure data, it's matched, and this is the calculated story. We have 46 million stock tank barrel. But for, for this uh, field, actually, if we have an increase in, in gas saturation from zero to 7% uh, of uh, volume, so this uh, will reduce the uh, relative vulnerability to oil from one uh, down to 0.36, which means we have a significant reduction in relative mobility to oil and significant reduction in the uh, oil production uh, rates. So in, in that field, actually, uh, the supporting of uh, reservoir pressure is very uh, uh, important and essential to avoid uh, an increase in the uh, uh, gas saturation in the reservoir and accordingly you will lose the um, uh, high amounts of the oil production for reservoir driving mechanism as you can see and at the early time we have the uh, water uh, influx is dominant uh, is um, in this uh, color and the expansion of solution gas is, is relatively small but with more uh, depletion in average use of pressure as you can see the effect or the uh, contribution of uh, gas uh, expansion of solution gas is increasing uh, when the effect of water influx is uh, decreasing that means support, the reservoir pressure support is uh, very important uh, this is um, uh, for that field uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, the confirmation for this scenario using Campbell plot so if we plot F, uh, F uh, divided by ED against F and X axis, so this is the uh, 
the uh, the behavior of data so we have early uh, uh, early time increase followed by a sudden uh, decrease in the uh, f uh, uh, divided by ad uh, and um, against f uh, as you can see that uh, means we have uh, this is the typical behavior of weak water aquifer according to this diagnostic Campbell plot. And now I will highlight uh, the production and artificial uh, left. Actually, this is the typical uh, the uh, arrangement of uh, oil production uh, whereas we have downhole completion against a specific profession interval and on the surface we have Christmas tree and it's um, uh, arrangement of uh, uh, and, uh, the uh, uh, valve system. We have, this is the tubing head and casing head and, and um, uh, master valve and uh, the, we have pressure gauge, uh, kill wing valve and production wing valve and the uh, choke to control uh, wells while uh, production. So uh, for, uh, if we uh, consider two different scenarios, the uh, first one of uh, the well well flowing naturally of the uh, bottom hole uh, bottom hole flowing pressure is higher than the uh, applied or the uh, back pressure on well on well head to well head pressure plus the hydrostatic pressure of fluid column and while if we have a reduction in bottom hole pressure lower than the um, Submission of uh, wellhead pressure and hydrostatic uh, uh, pressure of the fluid column. In that case, uh, this uh, the well will uh, require such artificial lift system to uh, restore production. So, as an um, an uh, artificial lift uh, system evaluation, actually we have uh, this uh, integrated workflow to consider uh, the. Uh, uh, how to screening criteria of the artificial lift system. Typically, we have different alternatives to select based on the uh, reservoir driving mechanism, reservoir fluid, uh, reservoir permeability, expected flow rate, associated any production problems like sand production or um, asphaltine or um, uh, uh, the wax production and so on. So uh, this is the team evaluation of the artificial lift uh, methods. Uh, we have commercial evaluation in terms of the, uh, the running time of the artificial lift system and also a risk analysis. And next, uh, the, uh, to, gener to generate uh, available artificial lift systems and make uh, the best recommendation and then and install the uh, the uh, final system selected. So this is the uh, process of uh, artificial lift uh, system selection. So uh, simply, this is if we have uh, inflow performance uh, relationship of, of um, uh, pressure against uh, flow rate. So, and if we consider uh, the natural flow uh, scenario, so this is the uh, outflow performance system and this is the operating point. Once uh, we have an, an, uh, an such uh, uh, decrease in uh, bottom hole uh, pressure, and as you can see, we may have an increase in the corresponding production rate due to different pumping or artificial lift systems. This is the effect of a second road pump system, gas lift system, ESP, electric uh, submersible uh, pump, and this is the, uh, uh, the different applications for artificial lift system. You have to consider the uh, production and, and the reservoir parameters and also the running uh, cost and um, uh, reservoir fluid data. So uh, for the last uh, part of this session, which is well testing applications. So uh, well testing is simply a, a signal is uh, sent into uh, the reservoir by a controlled opens and shut in at well location. This uh, signal is, um, is generated by a control of uh, the well production. 
and in the mean in uh, in the meantime we will uh, the reservoir response or pressure transient will be recorded and the corresponding early time and uh, middle time and late time uh, properties will be identified. So for early time, we have uh, data for well and um, uh, well model or near well bore, uh, uh, near well bore parameters, the quality of completion data. For uh, middle time vision, we typically uh, have um, characteristics of average reservoir pressure and reservoir model. And for late time response, we have important data regarding the uh, boundary distance and the boundary type, and also uh, uh, reservoir boundary response. So uh, applications of well testing is uh, it's important for exploration to characterize reservoir size and hydrocarbon volume, and also reservoir productivity. For uh, reservoir development and uh, also reservoir management to, uh, to evaluate uh, the uh, Average reservoir pressure, uh, the uh, reservoir productivity, formation uh, damage, and also to evaluate the uh, well stimulation treatment efficiency. So, uh, for uh, pressure transient analysis, we have to have such downhole equipment to uh, measure bottom wall uh, pressure and temperature with time. And also on surface, we have to have well head equipment to control well while while uh, during this test and a bombing and transfer system and separation system corresponding surface measurements of uh, pressure and uh, temperature and also fluids and uh, we may collect some fluid samples for analysis all of these data will be required and at the same time we have to have such data acquisition system like uh, well uh, real time or downhole uh, memory gauge and uh, the uh, well uh, uh, software or hardware uh, system for test int integration and and test data interpretation. So uh, this is the assembly uh, and um, uh, the uh, understanding of uh, reservoir uh, pressure distribution. So uh, the uh, uh, reservoir pressure distribution or pressure transient uh, at if we have a, a shot in well and this is well is allowed to flow at constant rate so this uh, the pressure transient uh, we will uh, will be generated from this well and will pass uh, and will move throughout the uh, reservoir and the uh, the velocity of this pressure transient actually as you can see is, uh, is, uh, is will be a function of uh, uh, K phi mu CT or reservoir velocity permeability, fluid viscosity, and total compressibility. As long as the pressure transient doesn't reach the external reservoir boundary, so we have what we call the transient or infinite, infinite acting radial flow uh, period. But once the pressure transit is uh, is reached the reservoir uh, boundary, as highlighted in this uh, red uh, red color, uh, in that case we have uh, pseudo or uh, um, the boundary dominated flow uh, flow period. One of the important uh, uh, reservoir management applications to uh, evaluate the effect of the skin uh, damage on the reservoir pressure profile. So skin is uh, simply an additional pressure drop in the, in the uh, uh, bottom wall pressure due to near wall bore uh, damage and maybe due, due to drilling fluid or cement operations or invasion of the drilling mud and so on. So uh, this additional pressure, this is the, the uh, traditional, the normal reservoir pressure profile uh, from the average reservoir pressure down to bottom wall flowing pressure. If we have zero scan or zero formation damage, but if we have positive formation damage, so the uh, corresponding bottom wall flowing, flowing pressure will be lower than uh, actual and this pressure, uh, uh, this uh, the, the uh, pressure uh, drop is typically is the pressure drop due to skin. 
So uh, the uh, to solve such uh, problems where the hydraulic fracturing is then one of the important techniques to bypass new neural for damage and, and uh, create uh, new conductive bosses in the reservoir and also minimize drawdown while production. And this is the uh, typically arranged the uh, uh, typical of uh, the uh, hydraulic fraction. And this is, uh, if we assume this is a whirlpool, we have this uh, fracture of mobility, which is higher, much higher than the reservoir average reservoir of mobility. Okay, and uh, we have fracture this fracture width, and this is the fracture half length. Similarly, in hydraulic fracturing operation, uh, huge uh, arrangement of surface uh, equipment or pumping system is uh, required to uh, to uh, uh, ensure pumping of uh, uh, hydraulic fracturing the fluid at very high injection rate to initiate and propagate fracture in the uh, reservoir. So in gas wells or high uh, uh, rate wells, we have another what we call rate dependent skin. It's uh, the flow uh, velocity in that case will uh, uh, will be dependent on the flow rate, which means we have turbulent flow. And in that case, we have to evaluate the rate dependent skin and its effect on the uh, pressure uh, response and uh, production uh, profile. So in, in this example, and we have in this test, this is the effect of a uh, dependent skin and the uh, model in, in red color, we have uh, a constant skin, which is not, uh, not matched with the measure of the pressure response. Uh, due to the effect of a rate dependent skin. So it's simply if we have, uh, it will have a linear relationship with flow rate. In other words, if we have uh, increasing flow rate, so the rate dependent skin will be increasing. This is, uh, this is the effective skin uh, equals the uh, mechanical skin plus the um, the uh, DS um, D capital, which is uh, rate dependent on under the flow coefficient or rate dependent skin multiplied by the flow rate. So this is simply the relationship between uh, the skin versus rate. It's simply a linear relationship. Once the uh, rate dependent skin is applied, so the uh, pressure, uh, uh, the uh, pressure uh, measurement of the history plot, as you can see, is uh, is matched uh, due to uh, the effect of the red dependent skin is considered. To highlight one of uh, two examples for the well testing interpretation, in this uh, we have a radial composite system. In this system, as you can see, the uh, reservoir is divided into two different parts or two different compartments or two different regions with different mobilities or stratification of the reservoir fluid, typically due to a change of reservoir work on the fluid parameters like uh, water injection, a change of water viscosity uh, uh, rather than the actual reservoir fluid and so on. So uh, this is the radial composite system. We have two parameters to define, which is um, mobility and uh, diversity uh, ratio. And uh, to highlight the changes between the inner zone in, in yellow color and the outer zone in the green color. So and uh, for the field application for well this, uh, this system, uh, uh, reservoir system, we have an, a water injection uh, in oil reservoir. And um, uh, actually, in, due to uh, water injection, we have to expect in such a fluid uh, a change of viscosity change uh, uh, or even uh, we have such a mobility change around the injection wells. And this is the, uh, we have this uh, well uh, all full of tests. So in, in this period, uh, we have injection period for uh, injection at injection rate 1,000 barrel per day, 10,000 barrel per day, followed by this full of period. For uh, well testing, uh, interpretation for this uh, fall of period, as you can see, we have uh, at first we have uh, this uh, the um, uh, radial composite uh, system, 
and this is the inner zone we have uh, uh, high uh, uh, we have high uh, mobility or low uh, stabilization uh, levels but in the outer zone we have um, um, uh, a reduction in the uh, mobility and in which is the second stabilization uh, level which means we have uh, re uh, reduced outer zone mobility or stability due to the effect of water injection uh, away of the injection well. Another application of uh, this uh, composite reservoir system for gas condensate uh, reservoirs, we, uh, we may have uh, such condensate banking around the whirlpool due to reduction of average reservoir pressure due below the uh, uh, dew point pressure. Uh, therefore, we will expect and decreased inner zone mobility or, or stratification due to the um, formation of condensate bank around the whirlpool, which means it will the uh, what will uh, represent a constraint for gas production and it will the, reduce the um, effective vulnerability to gas and finally it will uh, reduce the uh, gas uh, production uh, uh, production rate that's an, uh, the uh, last um, application we will uh, highlight in this uh, uh, presentation that's all I have. Thank you so much for joining me in this session and uh, see you for, uh, in the upcoming events.